Okay, in this video we're going to continue on with exercise 1E of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page 34. The question we're going to do is number 5. Now, just once again, as I've said before, the book, it doesn't go into a lot of detail about unit vectors. So it actually says something that's incorrect. It says that if you read the, the question, it says A is a vector of magnitude 10 units, B is a vector along the negative J, J axis. Now, as I've said before, it's not a j-axis. You have either an x, a y, or a z-axis. They're the axes. And then you've unit vectors which define which direction your vector is facing. So we've defined the fact that in this direction we have positive j-hat. That means it's positive but along the y-hat axis. Uh, the y -axis. If this way it's negative across uh, along the y-axis, that means it's negative j-hat. If it's facing this direction, well then it's on the x-axis but it's positive i-hat. If it's along this direction it's on the x again however it's negative i-hat. So the point is the, 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 the axis you're in doesn't change with sine but the, what changes with sine is your unit vectors. So down here just to show you again okay this, direct, this unit vector here shows positive i-hat this here shows positive j-hat. This is negative i-hat negative j hat. So it's facing those directions, they are your signs. But they're all like, these two vectors here are both on, well, facing in the same direction or parallel to the x-axis. So they're both in the x-axis. Whereas this one, these, this one and this one are both face. they're both parallel to the, the y-axis. So they're both in the y-axis, but look, they've got different signs. So that gives you your direction. And finally, just to say again, you could you can have your unit vectors facing any way you want, provided that you stick with that particular convention. So you could have i hat going left and j hat going down being positive, or i hat going left being positive and j hat going up being positive. It doesn't matter, but look, like I said, we've defined them in a certain way, and we're going to stick with them. And uh, that's the way you would, if you ever go to college, that's exactly what you're going to do. So we have our axis as, as so, with our unit vectors as so. So we're going to draw the vector B, and it says it's along the negative, it says J hat axis, so it's along the negative Y axis. So J hat, there's positive J hat, negative J hat is in this direction. It says it's along the axis itself, so I'm just going to draw it here, we'll say, call that the vector B. Now, it says the vector A is like this, it, show, it draws it like that, that's the vector A, and it gives you an angle of theta. It also says that tan theta is equal to what? 3 divided by 4. Now look, lads, I, I, see, uh, I see a typo in this, and it's the same typo I saw the last time. This is a triangle. We'll say if we just make our triangle here, it's the same as resolving our, our resultant vector into its component unit vectors. But look, if we just have a triangle like this, right? If this is 3, this is 4, what's this? This is equal to 5. How do you know that? It's very simple. It's Pythagoras. It's look, x squared is equal to 4 squared plus 3 squared is equal to 16 plus 9 is equal to 25 so root 25 sorry excuse me root 25 is equal to what? 5 okay so that means that it says in the book that the magnitude of the vector A is equal to 10 now I've seen this mistake before it's not it's equal to 5 now look, if I have made a mistake myself, I accept that. Just point it out in my video, please. But I, I'm pretty sure of this. Now, so we know tan theta is equal to 3 over 4, which means this is 5. But uh, we'll just ignore that information for the moment. We want to resolve this resultant vector into its component unit vectors. right? We, we know it's a resultant because it's made up of two vectors added together. Namely this one and this one like that. So we use Sakatoa. Alright, well, let's do cosine this time, so we know the cosine is, say, cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and we know that the hypotenuse is equal to what? It's equal to 5, therefore the adjacent is equal to 5 cos theta. Similarly, do the exact same thing with sine, and you're going to get the opposite is equal to 5 sine of theta. Now, you should be able to do that straight away without even you should write these straight in. There's theta. This angle here is the or this side here is opposite. So it's five sine of theta. This one is five cosine of theta. 
Now we're also given, of course, that tan theta is equal to 3 quarters. We know from Sakatoa that tan theta is equal to a, a opposite over adjacent. So therefore the adjacent, the opposite is 3 and the adjacent is magnitude of 4. Alright? But we've already worked out what the opposite and the adjacent are. So that means that 5 times the sine of 30, so, so theta, not 30, is equal to 3, and 5 times the cosine of theta is equal to 4. That's what that means. You should have seen that plenty of times before, and if, it is, if it's not making sense, look at my previous tutorial videos where I've gone into a good bit of depth and done them a lot slower than I've done it here. So anyway, look, we'll just pick, uh, we'll say this one here, so we go 5 sine of theta is equal to 3, uh, sine theta is equal to 3 fifths, theta is equal to inverse sine of 3 fifths. You should know at this stage, by the way, that inverse sine is the same thing as arc sine, and that's writing this just, just so you know what it looks like. So let's have a look. Press shift sine for inverse sine, 3 divided by 5 gives you an angle of 36 degrees, right? Now, just note that for a second. If you do the same thing with the cosine, you'll see that theta is equal to cos inverse of 4 fifths. Now, let's see if we're correct. Inverse shift cos 4 divided by 5 gives an angle of 36 degrees. Now, why is this important? Because when I was doing this video earlier on, I, used the, I wasn't thinking, so I used the magnitude of 10, and it didn't work. You get two different angles. So, what I'm saying here is by doing it two different ways, we get the same answer. So the angle is, in fact, 36 degrees. Right? So we can change theta here to be 36 degrees. Like that. Alright, now that that's, should be absolutely nothing new to you. So, we're given the fact that A plus B is equal to K i hat. Now remember, K here is a scalar. It does have, has magnitude, but no direction. That's just different, that's why it's different from a vector, because a vector has magnitude and it also has direction. So anyway, if we look at this, we know that it's k i hat plus, we'll say, 0 j hat. So the vector a plus b does not, we'll say that is equal to the vector c. So c does not live in the y-axis at all. So look at it up here, if it doesn't live in the y-axis, then it must live only in the x-axis. So it must live somewhere along here. And we've seen that a number of times at this stage as well. So let's find out, we'll say c, which is equal to a plus b, is equal to what? Remember, we can add vectors provided they're facing in the same direction. So this vector here and the b vector are both in the y-axis. Alright, well they're parallel to the y-axis because they have, they have unit vector j, so you can add those. This this, this vector here, the 5 cos theta, is in the x-axis, and there is no corresponding one in the y-axis for b, or for in the x-axis for b, because it's along the y-axis. So anyway, we go that. We'll, we'll just write it out just explicitly first, right? We have the fact that the vector a is equal to what? It is equal to 5 cos 36 i hat plus 5 sine 36 j hat. Once again, just a quick recap, how do you know what's positive, positive? But look, if you draw your axis like this, we're saying that positive x is that way, or positive uh, i hat is that way, positive uh, j hat is that way, so anything in here is plus plus, anything here is minus on the x but positive on the y, they're both minus here, and this is minus on the y but positive on the x. And look where we are in this case, the a vector is in uh, is in the, this quadrant, which corresponds to plus plus. And yeah, that's just a quick recap. So there's the vector a. Well, what's the vector b? b is equal to question mark. Um, well, it's equal to zero i hat plus uh, plus question mark j hat. That's something we know. So what do we do? Well, we uh, what do we do? Well, we know there's that it this here, uh, no, let's add it first, right? So, question mark j hat. So, therefore, a plus b is equal to, uh, it's equal to 5 cos 36 plus 0, 
in the i direction um, it's equal to 5 sine 36 plus question mark j direction like that but we know that it's zero in the j hat direction for a plus b so therefore this equals zero therefore 5 sine 36 plus question mark is equal to 0, question mark is equal to minus 5, sine 36. Okay, I am after uh, looking at this problem again and after realizing what is after going wrong. So look first of all here, just uh, the book has that the magnitude of the vector A is equal to five un uh, 10 units and that is incorrect. It's equal to 5 units. That's the first thing. The next thing is that the, the angle here is 36 degrees. We've worked it out in detail. Now just, I, I know we've, we've done a bit of maths and just to show you something here, look, this vector here, uh, it, this vector A lives in the x-axis and the y-axis. The vector B only lives in the y-axis. And we're told when we add them together that we only have a vector living in the x-axis. That means that since B has nothing to add to the x, well then the answer here the answer for a plus b is 5 cos theta. Alright, 5 cos theta, because we've, we've shown already how these two add to 0, and that's fine. So 5 cos theta. Now in the back of the book it says the answer is equal to 8 units. That's what it says. That, that means that uh, 8 units is equal to a plus b. Like that. Alright? Now, a plus b. But we also know that it's equal to, we'll say, it's uh, magnitude times cos of 36 right is equal to 8 units. So let's have a look at that. We'll see that uh, type the cos of 36 okay divide 8 by that and you get uh, 9.8 so we'll say this here should be 10. That's to get the answer that's in the back of the book but we've showed you already that that is actually should be 5 so if the answer isn't 8 it's 5 times the cos of 36 so it's half that it's 4.04 .04. like that. Okay, and that's the answer to that. Please subscribe to my video, to my channel, uh, pass this video on to your friends, and I hope it is worthwhile watching.